Hi, everybody. I am back. I'm ready to read to you. My dog is sitting here and she's watching my hand move. <laughs> um, so back to A Raisin in the Sun. Um, we are now on Act 2, Scene 2. A lot has happened. We're getting through this. Um, because you only have one more scene to read after this, and then you're on Act 3, which is awesome. So let's look at how we ended the first scene of Act 2. And um, Walter is, um, he's struggling with his um, masculinity because he wants to be the main provider for the family. He wants to be the head of the family. But like I told you guys before, mama is like the matriarch. So what she kind of says goes, um, and that's not necessarily, that's not a bad thing. It's just um, Walter is struggling with himself internally with so many things because it, it hurts his ego that his family is not doing as well as he wants. And he's all these dreams and he feels like he can't get there. So he says, what you need me to say you've done right for you, the head of this family, you run our lives like you want to, it was your money and you did what you wanted with it. So what you need me need for me to say it was all right for. So you butchered up a dream of mine. You who always talking about your children's dreams. And the mama says, Walter Lee. So he is like saying, you always said you care about our dreams, but you just took mine away. Um, and I wonder what you guys think about that. Do you think that's fair for him to say that to mama? Um, do you think she was in the right to use that money to purchase a house for the family? Or do you think that they should have made that investment? Um, is Walter being fair or unfair? Um, I have some of my personal opinions um, which are not right or wrong, I think that they're both in the right because they're both just trying to do what's best for the family. Um, I think one thing that Walter's really struggling with though is his masculinity. So what starts scene two of this act? So it's Friday night, it's, it's a few weeks later. Um, there's packing crates all around the apartment because they're gonna move and Benita and George come in from their evening, evening out. So George, okay, okay, whatever you say. Um, look, we've had a nice evening. Let's not spoil it, huh? I'm trying to talk to you. We always talk. Yes, and I love to talk. I know it and I don't mind it sometimes. I want you to cut it out. See the moody stuff, I mean. I don't like it. You're a nice looking girl all over. That's all you need, honey. Forget the atmosphere. Guys aren't going to go for the atmosphere. They're going to go for what they see. Be glad for that. Drop the Garbo routine. I, it doesn't go with you. As for myself, I want a nice, simple, sophisticated girl, not a poet, okay? <laughs> I have a lot of things that I would like to say about that statement. Um, is he being nice to Benita? Um, think about if you are telling your significant other, your family member, or friend something, and you're talking and they tell you to cut it out, that you talk too much, that you're, you're attractive, um, you don't need to be smart, is what he's saying. That he's telling her that no guy wants to be with a girl that is talkative and smart. He wants somebody dumb and pretty, is what he's telling her. That's offensive um, to tell anybody that. So it's kind of rude, right? And then beneath it goes, why are you angry, George? Because this is stupid. I don't want to go out with you to discuss the nature of quiet desperation or to hear all about your thoughts because the world will go on thinking what it thinks regardless. So he's telling her like, I don't want to have deep talks with you. That's all you want to do. Um, Benita says, then why read books? Why to go to school? It's simple. You read books to learn facts, to get grades, to pass the course, to get a degree. That's all. It has nothing to do with thoughts. I see. 
Good night, George. Oh, hello, Mrs. Younger. Hello, George, how are you feeling? Fine, fine, how are you? Oh, a little tired. You know, them steps can get you after a day's work. You all have a nice time tonight? Yes, a fine time, a fine time. Well, good night. Good night. Hello, honey, what are you sitting like that for? So, Benifa thinks like college and reading is about the experience. It's ab about the knowledge. It's about absorbing the knowledge and the excitement of learning. And for George, it's just steps to get a degree and get a job to have money. Where she's um, enjoying the steps. He's like, I want this done. I want to be done. I don't really care about that part. Um, yeah, so obviously they're two very different people. I'm just sitting. Didn't you have a nice time? No. No, what's the matter? Mama, George is a fool, honest. Is he, baby? Yes. You sure? Yes. Well, I guess you better not waste your time with no fools. Um, so then she gets up and goes to her room. Mama? Yes, baby. Thank you. For what? for understanding me this time. So mama is like, don't waste your time on some guy if he's being an idiot. And she's like, thank you for like, not pushing me to be with some guy because of his stature. She feels supported by mama. Now Ruth enters. Now don't you fool with any of this stuff, Lena. Oh, I just thought I'd sort a few things out. Is brother here? Yes. Is he? Yes. Oh, hello there, Johnson. Hello there yourself. How are you this evening, Ruth? Fine, Miss Johnson, how are you? If you remember, Miss Johnson's the neighbor that she tries to borrow cleaning stuff from, from like the very beginning of act one, scene two. Fine. Ain't you starting to poke out none yet? Um, she's talking about Ruth being pregnant. Like, how come you're not showing yet? Oh, ain't we getting ready, ready round here though? Yes, sir. Look at there. I'm telling you, the Yunners is really getting ready to move on up a little higher. Bless God. Bless God. Mama doubts Miss Johnson is actually being sincere and she says that. Oh yes, he's good. I mean, sometimes he works in mysterious ways, but he works, don't he? Yes, he does. I'm just so happy for y'all. And this here child looks like she could just pop open with happiness, don't, don't she? We're all the rest of the family. Benny's gone to bed. Ain't no sickness done hit you, I hope. So she's now kind of like um, talking about Ruth's pregnancy again. Um, or I think maybe she's even referencing to if, if Benny is pregnant too. Um, no, she just tired. She was out this evening. Uh, ain't that lovely. She's still going out with that little merchantson boy. Um, huh. That's lovely. You sure got lovely children, younger. Me and Isaiah talks all the time about what fine children you was blessed with. We sure do. Ruth, give Miss Johnson a piece of sweet potato pie and some milk. Oh, honey, I can't hardly a minute. I just dropped in to see if there's anything I could do. I guess y'all see the news what's all over the color paper this week. No, didn't get mine this, yet this week. You mean you ain't read about them color people that was bombed out of their place, uh, out their place, out there? Ain't it something how bad these white folks is getting here in Chicago? Lord, getting so you think you right down to Mississippi. Of course, I think it's wonderful how our folks keep keeps on pushing out. You hear some of these Negroes around here walking about how they don't get where they ain't wanted and all that, but not me, honey. Well, Hima, mm, I'm trying to figure out how to say her name. Well, Hemia? Othella Johnson goes anywhere, anytime she feels like it. Yes, I do. Why, if we left it up to, up to these here, so I'm not gonna say this next chunk because, um, both terms are offensive, 
and um, I'm not gonna say it because yeah, I just, I feel like it's offensive to both parties. Um, the term for um, white people and black people back then. Um, but basically what she's saying here is we left it up to white people and black people don't get anything. Um, and that's what's, what she's pointing out here is that um, now in the 1960s, we had the civil rights movement and um, black Americans are fighting for what rightfully should be is that they have um, equal rights and that they are treated like human beings because they are human beings. And so she's saying that we're not going to sit down for this and um, white people get everything, which is still kind of true today. We still have this racism in our society today and it's sad, but um, the younger is getting to move out of this apartment building is like moving on up in the world. So it's kind of representation of the black Americans getting um, the equality that they deserve. I'm gonna leave it here and the rest of it is for you to read. Um, you only have a couple pages. I believe I read like half of that for you. Um, and don't forget to answer the questions. Uh, just do the ones that I circled for you and you should be good to go. Enjoy your reading.